I really don't have that many people in my life that are crossword solvers. Uh-huh. I love being on a subway though and watching yeah. it, watching people solve, especially if you've written the puzzle that day and you kind of know like someone's probably all up in your brain. I've never had that experience. I'm really? still waiting for my first write the puzzle, go out in the wild. And... Is that just because you're like? Oh, because I never leave the house. That's... Yeah. <laughs> that's I'm Anna. I write crossword puzzle. I'm Eric. I'm a cruciverbalist, which means the same thing. No one in my family does crossword puzzles. They kind of think I'm a weirdo. But I went with my mom to the Angelica Film Theater when I was in ninth grade, maybe? And we saw that documentary wordplay, and I had this moment of cinematic identification with the word nerds on the screen and felt like, these are my people. Have you you seen it? Yeah, I've seen it. Yeah. It takes you through the American Crossword Puzzle Tournament, and it also has like a B-plot, which has all these different celebrities who solve the crossword regularly. How can that not be a orders? How can it not? No, it's not. Yes, it is. I had a teacher, stat teacher in high school. I was a word nerd like yeah. yourself. How I, do you feel about that word, by the way? Oh, it's so, fine. I mean, you it feel rhymes. okay about it? So we it have to rhymes, say so it's good. Geek chic, word nerd. What was the first one? Geek chic. I was a word aficionado and <laughs> I wanted to be a writer, but I got shipped off to like a math science, computer science magnet program. So when I found my stat teacher, who was like a big crossword guy, that was like my little oasis and my little thing that I could actually like get my head around in that world. So you'll go to like trivia with friends and people will be like, oh, Anna's coming. That's the crossword girl. She's about to smash everything. I mean, I, I try to lower expectations about my eyelashes yeah. a lot and just like come out <laughs> swinging. <laughs> Are you good yeah. at Scrabble and trivia? I know my za from my chi, but <laughs> trivia, not too good. Really? Yeah, surprisingly bad. Like, I have a good breadth of stuff that's good for, like, a crossword or a Jeopardy, but for some reason I just... That's right. Music round takes me out every time. Wait, hold Nothing on. Nothing in the music round. Stop. You're lying. Is this right? You were, like, a, a Jeopardy phenom. I, I did okay on Jeopardy, but, you know, when it came down to it and I had to know the capital of South America, South Africa. See, I don't even know which continent we're on. <laughs> How do we feel about breaking into an industry that is so dominated by old white men? I have yet to encounter any industry that is not Facts. dominated by older white men. I am in academia, so <laughs> this is really a really shocker that um, I'm mostly judged as being young and female before being judged as um, you know, competent. One way to make crosswords more inclusive is, for me as a, uh, someone who constructs with a computer, you have a word list. Mm. So I'm always trying to add stuff to the word list that someone else didn't think to put there and then maybe take stuff out of the word list that, yeah. you know, my people are not going to know. Or I mean, I think there's a way in which crossword puzzles are the way of documenting the language that we share and sometimes like the really peculiar ways in which language has evolved. Are we having a moment right now? Are we in the golden age of crosswords? So. I mean, like Natasha Lyonne did crosswords oh, yeah. in the Russian Doll, the Netflix yeah. show. It's it's cool right now. I had Cardi B in my first New Yorker puzzle, and I got to clue it in the in. I just gave her the mic, you know. I said, yeah. "Regular schmegular girl from the Bronx." I'm just a regular degular schmegular girl from the Bronx. The Times especially has done a lot of those celeb collaborations, right? Right. Yeah. So have you ever thing. done that? I have. I'm waiting for Beyonce. <laughs> Who would I wait for? Chris Jenner. Ugh, Kardashian puzzle. Ben? Hmm? What's the three letter word for perfection? You, darling. <laughs> have you gotten a date based on the fact that you have this talent? Do you lead with it when you meet people? <laughs> it's a huge problem. I can't stop getting dates from it. <laughs> <laughs> I do feel like there was a moment, there was a brief moment, tender moment in my life. Yeah. When, um, I felt like people were using crossword puzzles, either pictures of them like with a crossword puzzle or like Bruce 29 crossword lover or whatever. Sure. That it felt like it was supposed to be some sort of signifier of, you know, nerd culture, braininess, yeah. sapiosexuality, you know, there's a lot going on there and the packed into that mm. cultural reference. Courage to accept constant challenge. The challenge to solve problem. How did crosswords start? There was some guy. Yeah, so I don't actually know the origin story of crosswords except to say that there have been sort of two, there have been two kind of high points in the history of crosswords. The First World War, there was 
the start of the crossword craze. There's a ton of crossword ephemera from the teens and 20s, like songs that were written about crossword puzzles. Short so, Puzzle Mama, is that a song? That's the one. Okay, I thought I made that up. No, no, that's I guess real. It's real. Okay. That's real. Crossword Mama, you puzzle me. You Margaret Farrar, she was the first editor of the, of the New York Times crossword puzzle and actually worked to standardize everything we now think of as those sort of constraints or rules. The Times like sort of notoriously held off from adding a puzzle to the paper uh, between the 20s and the 40s because it was, you know, the paper of record and not fun and games, you know, <laughs> and so. Okay, so what about since we are millennials, how would you clue the word millennial? Easy. There's a lot to say about it, and it's just hard to sort of condense in a clue in like a pithy or interesting way, I guess. Yeah. I have um, just member of Generation Y. Yeah, just say like average avocado toast eater, right? Nice. That's, that's true. How would you do it hard? Person involved in a big tech demo. Why did my, uh, you gotta explain it, unpack it's, it. It's a stretch. So like uh, a big, in the technology field, you might say a big demographic of the people who work in oh, it. Oh, demo, big tech demo, not yeah. demonst de demo. Got it. I guess hard, I would, I would, one in three Americans by 2020. Ooh. How would you clue thirsty? Very basic clue would be like, you know, craving water or something like that. Sure. I'm gonna do an easy clue for thirsty. thirsty. Cotton mouth? Great. Oh, I've never seen that. Is that, that works, right? That 100% works. It transcends the whole Tired crossword grammar, but it's still yeah. very clear what you're asking for. Yeah. How would you do hard glue for thirsty? I try to like play around with just do like a word map of thirsty and see what words I can put together that you know don't necessarily that maybe come together in an unexpected way. Not water resistant. Not water resistant. That's good. Okay. What's yours? Like one posting revealing pictures on Instagram. Great. <laughs> I was waiting for it. It's gotta. It's gotta happen. Yeah. Shakespeare, how would you clue Shakespeare? I should do. Easy clue for Shakespeare. So I, I thought about what I could put into it that would sort of uh, bring my frame of reference into it because I haven't read a lot of Shakespeare per se. Okay. So I'm gonna say, playwright whose works inspired deliver us from Eva and the Lion King. <laughs> this is a riff on a clue that I actually did for another New Yorker puzzle. I'm gonna use air quotes. Love I it. Apologize. Um, he made Hamnet and Hamlet Ooh. because his son was named Hamnet, which is just trivia. Oh, but wow! But it's a great, it's great trivia. He made Hamnet, Hamnet and Hamlet. Okay. Anyway, and how would you do a hard one? Mine's really bad for this. Like, <laughs> like you know, face palm back. I'll start with um, he wrote speeches for Henry V. That's good. Thank you. What you um, Globe Trotter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry. I can't tell that. Good crossword writer or good crossword puzzle? Solver. Solver. Hmm. I don't know. I mean, I think you have to be a little bit touched to find creative inspiration in the 15 by 15 grid. I guess I like how like strict the rules are and hmm. how strong the conventions are so that if you want to make like a kind of crossword puzzle that's pushing the boundaries and is a bit like avant-garde in that way. <laughs> if you make left-right symmetry instead of the usual, people are like, whoa, well, exactly. real badass Exactly, over here. no, that's exactly, it's like you just like took the canvas off and you put it on the ground and you're like, <laughs> I'm the Jackson Pollock of crossword puzzles, yeah. motherfucker, yeah.